ManyChat user input fields are a great way to collect information from your subscribers. You can use that information to segment them into certain categories or share that information to other applications like your CRM through Zapier. Let's take a look at them now. All right, let's get started here. We're going to talk about the user input field or user input card within ManyChat. You do have to have the pro version of ManyChat to be able to use this, but it allows you to collect data from your subscribers, store it in ManyChat, though actually send it out to many different places through Zapier, to your CRM, to Google Sheets, to any place that Zapier connects to. So it's an awesome way. One is to collect the data within ManyChat and your messenger. Two is to be able to share it across many platforms. So let's get started here. We're on the dashboard. We're going to go down to flows. We're going to go into test, my test folder and user input. We're going to edit this. I didn't put this together. It has all the choices that we need. So we're going to get started here. Basically, when you're in, you start a flow like this. Now you can use the basic builder, which kind of throws it on the right here. And then you just scroll through it. Or you can use the flow builder, which I just love. So when you're in here and you're in your message, what you do is you go down and it says user input, it says pro. You click on it and then it adds a new one. So then what you do is then you would pick your type. What you want to do, we're going to go through every one of them. Pick a custom field where you want to store it, the value that they type in or select. And then you can actually do perform an action. You can tag somebody, remove a tag. You could add them to a sequence, unsubscribe them from a sequence. You can update custom fields. You could notify admin, many choices. So depending on what they do in the custom field, you could fire off a zap. So there's many things you could do right out the gate right here, right out of this user input card. And I'm going to delete this one because we're going to go up here and we're going to start from the beginning. So the first one, we're going to talk about text. So you have multiple choice. You have number, email, phone, URL, file, image, and location. So we have all those. This one's going to be text. And we're going to enter it into a text field. That I'm going to just kind of show you a little bit. So if we wanted to put it into a new field, what you have to do is create the custom field. Majority of the time, except when we get into the number field, you're going to pick text. Now, I have a zip code where I'm going to enter a zip code in the US. They're numeric. So we could use a number field for that. Date, date, time, and true, false doesn't really correlate to the user input fields, except for, you know, like I said, the text and the date. I mean, the text and the number. Date would work. Date and time would be a little more difficult and true and false. I don't find that that would correlate to something you're putting in, though I suppose you could. When we get through here, you can actually, on the multiple choice, you can substitute the value that goes in. So anyway, we're going to concentrate on text and number when we're, we'd be creating those custom fields. But for now, I have one called t-text, and we're going to store that answer of text in that field. The next one is multiple choice. So we're, we're going to pick multiple choice. And here, scroll up. Here, it allows you, you can actually type in free so they could Pick one of these or type in their answer. So it kind of gives them, obviously, a true multiple choice. And anything that they don't see on the list, they could type in. We're going to, here's a reply. So if you put that, if they got free text, then there's really no editing going on. Uh, similar to the text field, there's no editing. The great thing about the user input fields is a lot of them, when they're specific, let's say the multiple choice, the number, email, phone, they do have this error message check. So they can check to see if you're entering it correctly. And then you get a skip button. We'll kind of test that out. So what we're going to do is, depending on the answer, now within these multiple choice, you can 
say what the value is going to be saved. So, I mean, you could change this to one and two, three. So you can change whatever value is in the quick reply. You can actually change it to something else to store in the field if that makes more sense. Right now, what we're going to do is store exactly what's on there. And we're going to say done. And we have white. We have sparkling. So that's their choices as far as what type of wine do you like. The third one is a number. So you can actually get numbers and making sure that they're only entering digits, which is great. Uh, you get a skip button if they didn't answer the numbers. I'd probably change this text and say, hey, we really need this, so please don't push this button. Because <laughs> I think a lot of the information you're gathering, you really want. So you wouldn't want to skip it. And then we're going to store it in a number field. That's what the number will sign like that versus something else. If we went down to the list, you can see these are text with a T on them. These are the number field types. So what we want is we want T number. That's where we're going to store it. Well, now we're going to scroll down and we're going to do email. The email type, a user input. And we do have the editing going on, making sure that you're ending, entering a valid email. And we're going to store it in T email. It is a text field again. Like I said, most of the time what you're going to do is you either use a text custom field or a number custom field. Now we're going to go down to the phone number type, user input. Here's a phone. Again, it's going to do some, oops. It's going to do some editing. And it can skip, and we're going to store it in a T phone number. It's a text field again. The next one is URL. And I'm going to scroll up to that one. So I'm going to ent enter a reply type of URL website. It's going to check to make sure it's a valid website. And we're going to store it in a text field called T URL. The next one is a file. So you can actually upload a file. So a PDF, whatever, you're asking them a question. Hey, can you upload? Can you print this information sheet out, fill it out, scan it, and send it back to us? And they could do it right in Minichat, right in Messenger. And that would store within your subscriber, and you'd have access to that. At a later date, you could pass the information on to your CRM. So it's a great tool. We're going to store that in T-File with that one. Next one is Upload Image. We can actually upload an image. They can take a picture of something or anything like that. They can upload an image, and it's going to be stored up in T-Image. And we're going to make that a text as well. I'll show you what I mean is basically what they do is they store it someplace, so then you have the URL how to get to it. So we're going to store that there. And then the last one is location. And you can actually give somebody where you're located, and it could be stored right in the ManyChat subscriber data. So, And we're going to store that in T location. All right. So we're going to run this. We're going to publish it. And then we're going to run it. And I do have my phone here. All right. So now we're going to enter the city, go Germantown. And now we're going to go to the next one. What type of wine do you like? I'm just going to go red. Enter a zip code. I'm going to enter in a letter because we're looking for our numbers. So I'm going to put a letter in there. And it's going to come up and say, hey, please enter a number. Use digits only. Now you see the skip button, so you can actually skip it. I wouldn't suggest I'd probably change that text to say, hey, could you please enter a real number? You know, something like that. So I'm going to enter in a regular number. We should take that. Enter an email. Uh, if I enter in just that. We're going to get an error message saying, hey, that's not an email. So that's awesome. So now I'm going to put in a regular email. All right. 
So now we got the phone number. Turn in a phone number. Enter in a website. And that brings that up. Enter in a file. Now on a phone, there is no there is no paper clip on the bottom here. So I'm gonna go over here on the computer. Close that up. Bring that back. And I'm gonna use the paper clip, and then I can go out here and look for here's a PDF. And so I'm gonna upload that PDF. And there you go. So that PDF has been uploaded. And now I, I upload an image. So say that you want them to take a picture of something. So I'm just going to grab a sheet of paper quick. I am going to take a picture of a document. And I'm going to send it on my phone. And we can see it happen right here on the bottom. So it sent the document. So now we have the document up there. And now we can send, the next one is send location. So we can push that button and it's going to find our location. On my phone, there it is. And now it's scored the location and it says, thank you, we're all done. So. What we're going to do now is let's go check these things out in ManyChat. Go to the audience. Go to my test. Move me out of the way. And here we go. So if we go down to T-Text, we entered in Germantown. We entered on the multi, we entered in red. There we go. The number, we entered in the zip code. The email, we put in a valid email. Phone number, we put the phone number. The URL, we put the URL. Now here's the interesting part too, is here's a the file. And so what it did is it uploaded it to ManyChat and it's stored up in ManyChat. Now if I take that URL and put it in a browser, We should find the PDF, and there it is. So this is an awesome thing where you can store, you can have them upload a file stored in their user custom fields through a user input field, and you could pass that over to your CRM or something. So now you have documents that they needed to upload. You can upload them right in ManyChat, right in Messenger. Now image, same thing. The image that I took, the picture, one of the things I was thinking is using a loyalty program, using the scan code, and to, to get the scan for the day for the loyalty, you could have them take a picture of their receipt. And so you'd have the picture receipt right in Messenger, and it would store it in there, maybe their most current one. So in the conversation, you'd have all of them. And so there it is. There's the... There's the image that I uploaded. So that is pretty cool. And then the location, it's basically the coordinates of where you're at. So I'm not sure if I took the coordinates, never did this. Let's see what happens. Coordinates in here into Google. Well, look at that. There we go, into Google, and it knows right where I'm at. So there you go. That is the ManyChat user input field using the user input card. You do need the pro version to do it. And it's just a great way to collect that information right into Messenger or right into ManyChat. Then you can use it within all the applications across through using Zapier. So if you have any questions, just post them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks. Have a great day. Well, that concludes our video for today on the ManyChat user input field. Some great ways to collect information on your subscribers via text, phone number, email, just a number, upload a file, upload an image. 
Great way to use that information, you can segment them into categories or share it to your CRM through Zapier. So if you have any questions or comments on this, please post them down below. Be happy to answer them. And as always, please like the video, share it across the world, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Down in the descriptions, I do have a link to my Facebook group, like-minded people doing the same type of thing. So come on and join us, or just send me a friend request. I'm more than happy to connect with you. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.